Okay, I think we're good uh, with the first derivative part. I just wanted to bring that back because uh, it is very important being able to do the first derivative test, identifying your mins and maxes, plugging it back to the original to identify the exact minimum at the origin, zero, zero, the exact maximum at the point two eight. Um, and the fact that the function decreases from negative infinity to zero and from two to infinity, and it's increasing from zero to two. I didn't write down that part, but that was part of the instructions there. Okay, now, we haven't talked a whole lot about concavity, um, but I just wanted to kind of see what you had gotten from our conversations before and just kind of your perception of things. Um, so I asked you to observe where you thought it changed from concave up to concave down. Um, now, um, concave up is like a cup. It holds water. If you were to pour water onto this function, this part of the function would hold the water. Okay? This part of the function, if you pour it on top, it's going to run off. So the left side of this is concave up, the right side is concave down. Now, it's kind of hard to see where that actually changes. Um, but for once, I actually like the fact that these calculators don't graph in super fine pixelated detail. Because if you look at the way that this function is graphed, this side of the function um, is way steeper. So notice how this, and I don't know how the calculators are going to this, notice how uh, these segments that make up the curve are longer over here, and then they progressively get shorter, okay? And then when you come over here, they're shorter, and then they start becoming a little bit longer. Um, and then they start shrinking again, and then they start becoming larger. So what's happening, if we think about our tangent lines, they are way more negative on this side, and we're actually going to uh, compute some of those here in a minute um, and, and get into what the technical definition of concavity is. But I did want you to find the second derivative and I wanted you to kind of do what we do with the first derivative and see what you find out. So I said that it changes concavity at about 1. And the reason why I picked that value is because if you notice, um, these little segments are getting longer and then we've got two that are about the same length and then they start getting smaller again. So I'm thinking that there's some kind of change happening there where they're the same length, and if I follow that down to the x-axis, it's about 1. So if we take the second derivative, um, we get f double prime is uh, negative 12x plus 12, and if we set that equal to 0 and factor out a negative 12, then we get that x equals 1 is... Um, what causes the second derivative to equal zero. And if I test points like I do with the first derivative, I would check zero and two. When I do that, I get a negative times a negative, so that's a positive. And I get a negative times a positive, which is a negative. So to the left of one, the second derivative is positive. To the right of one, the second derivative is negative. That kind of corresponds to positive being up, negative being down. Um, so there is a correlation there. Now, I want to talk about how the tangent line slopes change here. So we're going to work with the first derivative uh, for a minute. Um, let's plug in some specific values. So I'm going to start, um, our graph looks like negative 2 is about as far as it goes in this window that we're viewing. So I'm going to test f prime of negative 2. I'm going to compare f prime of negative 1, f prime of 0, 1, and 2. Okay, I could test more values, but I just want, I want to test these for, for the moment. Now, I am actually going to find their exact values because I want to compare the slopes of these tangent lines because that's what the derivative gives us, right? The derivative evaluated at a point is the slope of the tangent line of that curve at that point. So f prime of negative 2 would give us 12 times negative 4. So that's negative 48. That is a very negative tangent line slope. 
to huge slope in general, but it's very negative. Negative one, and I'm plugging this in its factored form. If you're wondering where I'm plugging it in, I'm plugging it into this form right here, the negative six x times x minus two, because that makes it easier to crunch the numbers. Negative six times negative one is six. Negative one minus two is negative three, so that's negative 18. 18 is still a pretty steep slope, but it's not nearly as steep as negative 48. Um, at zero, it is zero, which it should be because zero is the minimum. F prime of one is negative six times uh, one minus two is negative one, so that's six. So now we have positive slope, but still fairly small. Um, F prime of two is zero because the derivative, because uh, two is a maximum. And let me do one more, let me do F prime of three. We get negative 18 times three minus two is one, so that's negative 18. So let's look at how the tangent lines, how the slopes are changing, okay? One, we know is the point that we got over here where the derivative was zero. So from negative two to one, how are our slopes changing? We go from negative 48 up to six. Now we could have picked a whole, whole bunch more uh, specific values there. Uh, we could have done negative 1.5, negative 0.5, um, stuff like that. But these are just the highlights. We go from negative 48 to six. So our, the slopes of our tangent lines are increasing. The slopes of our tangent lines are increasing from negative two to one. And I could have gone beyond negative two. Um, but it's just a snapshot. The slopes of the tangent lines are increasing. From one to three, we go from six to zero to negative 18. The slopes of our tangent lines are decreasing. Okay, so they are increasing here and they are decreasing here. That is the technical definition of concavity. When your tangent lines, when the slope of your curve is increasing, your function is plunging up. You're going from a more negative slope to a less negative slope, to a zero slope, to a positive slope, and okay, that's what creates a concave up curve. Um, when you go from a positive slope to a zero slope to a more negative slope, when those tangent lines are decreasing, that's what creates a concave down curve. So if your function is concave up, then your tangent lines um, are increasing. Okay, they're becoming, typically they're changing from more negative to positive. Okay, and F prime is increasing. Okay, F prime is increasing because F prime corresponds to your tangent lines. So if the slopes of your tangent lines are increasing, then F prime is increasing. So that means its derivative, F double prime, is positive. Okay, if F prime is increasing, then its derivative, f double prime, is positive. Just like if f is increasing, f prime is positive, you can apply the same logic here. Okay. So then if it's concave down, your tangent lines are decreasing. Usually changing uh, from more positive to more negative.
And so F prime is decreasing. Therefore, F double prime is negative. And that triangle there is delta. Delta represents change in electron chemistry and Mach 1. Okay. Questions so far? We're just going to talk about it, okay? We're going to run through it, add a few notes here and there. Um, your function obviously has to be differentiable, okay? Your function is concave up on an interval. If f prime, reminder, slope of a tangent lines is increasing on the interval. That's what we just wrote down. Um, the graph is going to lie above all of its tangent lines on that interval. So your tangent line approximations will be underestimations. So let's let's just draw a um, example of that. Okay, here's a concave up, just simple case parabola. Okay, so the tangent lines. I'm going to draw a couple of tangent lines in here. If we've got one over here, okay. Let's say we've got one over here. So notice those tangent lines are under the curve. The tangent lines are under the curve or the curve is above the tangent lines, whichever perspective you want to look at it. But these tangent line approximations, if we were to write the equations of these tangent lines and use them to approximate, well let's say that we were trying to approximate for this point right here, well the tangent line would give us this value right below it. Okay, or if we were trying to approximate for this point on the curve, I would actually have to extend my tangent line so that we could actually see. The tangent line would give me the approximation down there for the same x value. Okay, that would be some x2, let's say this is x1. Okay, so concave up, tangent lines are under the curve, so your tangent line approximations are underestimations. You've got to know that. I've seen questions that literally they just say f double prime is negative on this interval. So a tangent line approximation for this value would be, and the answer is an under approximation. Okay? Um, so you've just got to know that. Okay? So conversely, for concave down, your derivative is decreasing. Okay, concave down, the derivative is decreasing, so your graph is below the tangent lines. So again, let's just use a parabola, we'll use a wide one this time. Okay, concave down, tangent lines are above the curve, and the curve is below the tangent lines, so your approximations are overestimations. So say I wanted to approximate for this x value, the tangent line is above the curve, so its approximation is greater than the actual value. Okay, let me show you one right here. So this is some other x value. The approximation is above that. Okay, so you just kind of have to Either memorize that or understand that logic either way, but I promise you, you will most likely see a question like that on the test. Okay, points of inflection, okay? Points of inflection are what we call changes in concavity. Um, so when the first derivative equals zero or is undefined, then it's a critical point. When the second derivative is zero or undefined, then it's a point of inflection. And I think Kim likes to call them pips. They're funny, possible points of inflection. That's what she calls them. So just brace yourself for that in this week's video. It's okay if you laugh out loud. I'm not going to call them that because I just think it's weird. But points of inflection um, occur when the second derivative is zero. So your second derivative test is just like your first derivative test. Okay, you take the second derivative, find where it's zero, find where it's undefined. Um, and then you just test points. If it's greater than zero, you're concave up. If it's less than zero,